So before we had our nice long break that we've been on, we were studying about dependent and independent clauses. So we're going to be doing a little bit of review right quick with just a dependent clause because that's going to be important for us as we begin to study our comma rules. So if you remember, a dependent clause was a clause that is in a sentence that needs to have another part in the sentence that it depends on. So remember, a dependent clause does have a subject and it does have a verb, but it can't stand by itself. And so it has to have some other part in the sentence for it to be able to be in a sentence. So now we're going to be starting to study some comma rules related to these dependent and independent clauses. So we're going to be studying first off commas and introductory phrases and clauses. So the first rule here that we have is when a sentence begins with a dependent clause, you have to put a comma after it. Here are some examples. Because his bike was broken, comma, the man had to take a taxi. Now remember, because his bike was broken is the dependent clause in this sentence, and that subordinate conjunction because is what makes it a dependent clause. So after that dependent clause, you would have to put that comma, and it's because the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence that you have to put the comma. Okay, here's another example. After the kids returned from the skating rink, comma, they all took a long nap. Same thing applies here. After the kids is kind of the subordinate conjunction here, after, okay, you have to have that comma after this dependent clause because it's at the beginning of that sentence. Now, the next rule that we're going to review is a little bit tricky. Remember, Mrs. Powers has always told you that the English language is a little bit tricky, and here is one of those situations. This is not one of those hard and fast rules. This is merely a matter of style or a suggestion, if you will. Okay, so listen to this rule. A comma is recommended after any introductory prepositional phrase. Now remember, Prepositional phrases start with prepositions. They are not dependent clauses. They don't have a subject. They don't have a verb. Remember, we studied prepositional phrases before we studied the clauses. Okay? So remember, an introductory prepositional phrase would be at the beginning of a sentence. Okay? So listen to what it says. Some grammar books say that a comma is only needed after a prepositional phrase that is four or more words. But this is just a matter of style. So it's not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes they say you should put it there. Sometimes they say you don't need to. Here are some examples if you do put the comma in a sentence with an introductory prepositional phrase. I'm going to be asking you to do that in our lessons for this time. Underneath the live oak tree, comma, my favorite dog is buried. So your prepositional phrase is underneath the live oak tree. So you would want to put the comma after tree, okay? Under the bed, comma, I keep my board games. Under the bed is your prepositional phrase. So you would want to put a comma after under the bed. And our last example is, on top of the high shelf is the key to the door. On top of the high shelf is our introductory prepositional phrase, so you would want to put a comma after that. Now, this is a hard and fast rule, and you will always want to follow this rule. Okay, the last one says, two or more prepositional phrases in a series require a comma after the last one. So in this situation, the prepositional phrases are being pushed together in a series of prepositional phrases. So let's look at this example. 
Inside the fence at the far end of her property, she built a barn. Now, you see the comma after property, but actually there are three prepositional phrases in that first part of that sentence. Listen to them. Inside the fence is a prepositional phrase. At the far end is a prepositional phrase. Of her property is a prepositional phrase. Then you put the comma, then you finish the sentence. She built a barn. So if you're going to run a string of prepositional phrases together, they call that a series of prepositional phrases. You put them all together, and then you put the comma at the end, and then you finish your sentence.